So welcome everyone to the official um, hours, office hours for Fig Jam. Um, I'm Anna, I'm a designer advocate and I'm joined by Miggy, who's also a designer advocate. Um, and we also have a couple of Figmates helping us during uh, this office hours as well. So they'll also be like popping in the chat, answering questions um, and just in general helping us out. So I guess we can all introduce ourselves. All right, cool. Yeah, so, so yeah, uh, I'm Anna. Go for it. Designer advocate, putting in that face stamp. <laughs> and I'm Miggy, also a designer advocate here at Figma. I focus a little bit more specifically on education. And uh, that's going to be like our, our first little tip is uh, avatar stamps. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Miggy, what's your favorite condiment? I guess since is, we're talking about fig jam. Yeah. Oh, okay. My favorite condiment. I really like using um, like hot sauce and, and mayo or like, so like hot sauce, ketchup and mayo. And like, I put it together with a little bit of uh, 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 what is it? Um, garlic. And we call it queso mayo, like in Spanish. Right. But it's really just ketchup mayo, but I also put hot sauce. Wow, this is like a whole fancy customized concoction you have here. <laughs> oh, indeed. You got to keep it spicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to say mine is probably garlic butter. I'll put it on anything and everything. Um, so that's my favorite. But yeah, let's go on to learning more about the other figmates that we have joining us. Um, and they can go introduce themselves. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, I'm Sawyer. I'm a software engineer on Fig Jam. My favorite condiment would have to be, oh, this is like tough, probably mustard. I don't like mustard on everything, but like if things that are good with mustard, I love. Um, and I'll just stamp myself. I think, I think that's, uh, that's my favorite condiment. Cool. Hi, everyone. I'm Priya. I'm a product marketing manager at Figma. I've been working on Fig Jam. And my favorite condiment is definitely ranch. I think it can go on pretty much anything. Hey everyone, I'm Wayne. I'm one of the product marketers at Figma and my favorite condiment is probably um, sriracha, any kind of hot sauce. Hi everyone, I'm Alice. I'm the engineering manager on Fig Jam and my favorite condiment is probably the chili crisp, not surprisingly. And I think we also have a couple extra people joining so Maybe Carl can talk about himself. Oh, uh, yeah. Hi, I'm uh, I'm Carl. I'm also uh, an engineer on the uh, on the Fig Jam team, and just here uh, answering questions today. So, yeah. All right. Cool. Is that everyone? I think that's uh, no. We have uh, Andreas too, right? Andreas, are you here? Hi. Yeah, I'm here. Um, let's see, favorite condiment, uh, probably like mayonnaise or aioli, uh, on fries or anything really. Awesome. I do love a good aioli. All mm -hmm. right. So, oh man, we should have totally added them to the stage too, but either way, we got to give a big <laughs> shout out. I'm going to throw some emotes. I absolutely love my emotes. Let's throw in those little hard eyes. All right. So let's give it up for the team. Um, next up. All right. What are we talking about? Cool. Yeah. So Figma, uh, Miggy will actually be showing this um, a little later, but if you guys haven't checked it out yet, we have a whole bunch of community templates out there for Fig Jam, um, both created by our team, but also there's been a lot of people out there that have been making their own templates and sharing them. So definitely check those out if you get a chance. Um, it's a great way to just get started if you don't want to start with a blank board. Um, and we have things like related to brainstorming, um, team retros, virtual stand-ups, de design critiques as well. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different options out there that you can already get started with and building off of. And then the next thing we wanted to talk about was help and support. So we do have a support forum. That's if you guys have any kinds of like questions or need help from the team. Um, so definitely go check that out if anything comes up as you're testing out Fig Jam. And then also we do have a help center. So that has a lot of answers to commonly asked questions related to Fig Jam as well. So be sure to look at that also um, if you get any questions, but 
Also during the live stream, we will be answering questions live. So you can enter in any of them into the Q&A and then either people on our team will be answering them in the chat or we'll be responding to them live as well. Cool, so I think that's all of the intro so far. So going into Fig Jam, um, this is one of our newest features that we've released um, at Config. If you guys don't know anything about it, Big Jam is basically this um, open collaborative space where people can brainstorm and collaborate as well. And um, you know, here at Figma, we've always been trying to create tools that help empower designers and um, other people like engineers, product managers, um, marketing people, anyone to be able to collaborate together virtually. Um, but we realized that actually a lot of the design work starts way before you go into the Figma file and start creating screens, which is why we made Fig Jam is basically that's a way to actually start, you know, brainstorming with your team, coming up with user stories, doing all that ideation that you need to get to before you can actually start building a screen. And then as we'll show you um, during the live stream, you can also use Big Jam anytime throughout the design process. So if you have any kind of like feedback you wanna get, you can bring in designs from Figma to Fig Jam for live critiques. Um, you can also do retros after you're done doing a project to reflect on what went well, what could go better. So there's just a huge variety of use cases for Fig Jam um, and it's super powerful. All right, so yeah, let's get on to jamming. Um, Miggy, I guess you can take it from here. Okay, one sec. Um, I did want to take an opportunity to uh, give Priya a little bit of a showcase though. Um, Priya, are you ready to talk a little bit about Fig Jam or? Sure, yeah, what do you want to know? All right, so basically, um, we just want to know a little bit about the, uh, the goals of the team when building Fig Jam. You know, here at Figma, we're all about open design. So we just like sharing some of those insights. Yeah, totally. So um, I can share a little bit about what the team had in mind um, when we were actually designing Fig Jam. Um, there are a few core things we knew we really wanted to get right. Uh, the first was really just making sure that Fig Jam was easy for anyone to use, not just designers. Um, and the reason for that is the activities that we were thinking would be most common in Fig Jam, brainstorms, retros, are things that involve you know, the entire team. So we really wanted to make it easy to learn and easy to use. We also wanted to support a lot of the use cases we were already seeing in Figma. And so we'd actually been seeing a lot of teams try to use Figma today for brainstorms and diagramming. And so we prioritized those use cases because we knew that they were things that you know, our users were already trying to complete. Um, I think another thing that was really important was just trying to make it really fun and, and playful, just so that everyone felt really comfortable. You know, sometimes it's a little bit, um, can be a little bit intimidating to share your ideas and participate in some of these retros and um, ideation sessions. So we wanted to bring in that sense of like playfulness and joy. Um, and then the last thing I'd probably call out is just making sure that we connect it to Figma. Um, that's something we're really just getting started on, but I know that you're going to show a couple of ways um, that teams can already do that today. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. We really appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to get started here. Um, just thinking a little bit about what Fig Jam is for. Um, first things first, we're actually going to begin by highlighting the community. One of the ways that you can get started with Fig Jam is using some of the existing templates that we have made available. So we have uh, templates that are made by Figmates internally here at Figma, but since its release, we've already had a number of different people in the community start to share their own custom made templates in the community. So uh, I actually have here, if you go to figma.com slash community slash fig jam, you'll be able to find a whole host of different, uh, uh, different templates that you can use. So if I click here, I can go to fig jam and I can see some different uh, uh, templates to kind of get started with. I'm actually looking for the, um, and I already have it pulled up here. Let's do it that way. Um, I have the virtual standup. So let's pull up the uh, virtual standup template. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to duplicate this into my, my Twigma organization. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy the elements that I have and bring it over into our jam file. So here we are. This is actually made by a Figmate, an engineer here, Burcible. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to copy that and uh, just head back over here into our jam file where everyone's at and pull this. Now, what a virtual standup is, 
is, you know, like you're just having a meeting and you have your teammates and we're getting together and sharing, um, you know, things that are going on for the week, what they're going to be working on. And I can already see Sawyer and Priya beginning to add stickies. Uh, one of the prime features of Fig Jam is going to be these awesome stickies. I really love the stickies that we have here in Fig Jam because it shows a little bit of authorship. I can hide the authorship. I can show my authorship. I can leave, let's see could leave various comments. Everybody's gonna probably leave more relevant comments than I am. Uh, Priya's like, this is office hours. Um, you know, so if we're thinking about our kind of like little fake organization that we have here at Twigma, right? This is our virtual standup. We're having our meeting, we're engaging with each other and, um, you know, like talking about what we're gonna be working on. And uh, you could see here, we're adding in stickers going to show you all how to add that emoji wheel that we used earlier. So if you press the E key, you can see there's like a sticker wheel. If I press the E key again, I have the emotes. So the emotes, I can just kind of give an instant reaction. If I press the E key, I could press the E key again, and I could leave stamps. So let's say if we were voting on something, I can leave a stamp with my face to say, hey, I voted on that. If I press the E key again, I can leave a little sticker for a star. Um, so it's a great way to just kind of easily get together and kind of share what it is that you're working on. So virtual standup, we're personally, you know, on our team here at Figma, we use this all the time. So on Monday mornings, we get together, we have our virtual standups in Fig Jam. Uh, Anna, do you want to take us on to uh, our next use case, the uh, brainstorm? Yep. Awesome. Let me share my screen. All right, cool. So maybe after your team has done a virtual standup, they want to move on to actually starting like the brainstorm portion of the workshop that they wanna do for that week. So this is actually pulled from a template that exists in the Figma community. Um, it's pre-populated with spaces for people to put down their name, as well as some post-it notes that they can start filling out with ideas. So here you can see a in-action brainstorm from the, Fig the Twigma team about how to improve the checkout experience. Um, as Miggy showed before, you can react to ideas that people wrote on post-it notes um, using the stickies as well as your face. Um, we also have some different shortcuts. So you can hit M to actually enable the marker tool. So you can see Miggy's having fun doing drawing. Maybe I'm gonna add a couple of like stars here. I'm not nearly as good of an artist as he is. Um, and then in addition to that, you can generate more stickies by either pulling from the bottom here or clicking S, that'll easily add in a sticky for you. And then if you wanna keep adding a bunch of them in a row, maybe you have a lot of ideas to put down, um, I think you can do command enter and that'll automatically place another sticky next to the one that you already created. So yeah, stickies are just a really great way to brainstorm with your team, plus you place your ideas. You can even organize them together based on different themes. It's something that our team has personally been doing a lot um, as we're coming up with different ideas and collaborating together virtually. Um, and then some other cool stuff that you can do. So here you can also insert images. Um, so maybe part of our brainstorm is we're critiquing the kind of images that we're using in Twigma. And something really interesting you can do with those is actually if you click on an image that you inserted, we have this little crop tool and you can actually choose what kind of shape it wants to be. So I can make it a square, I can make it a circle, landscape, anything like that. Um, I can also just you know move this around or enlarge the shape that's behind this thing. I can also custom edit where I'm cropping the image. So it's just super useful thing if you want to incorporate images into your Fig Jam files. Yeah, those images are great. I uh, just learned how to do that yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then these are just some of the shortcuts that we talked about before, if you guys want to review those. So M for marker, S for stickies, and then um, command enter for Mac and control enter for Windows if you want to keep adding multiple stickies. Cool. So Mickey, do you want to move on to the checkout, the flow part? Absolutely. All right, cool. So my screen is now being shared. So one other cool thing. So we've noticed, um, so we have like the marker tool. If you look down here, we have this awesome little jam toolbar. 
Uh, so the toolbar, you know, we can bring up our like marker tools, we can bring up our stickies, but we also have these great shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a shape right from the toolbar and I'm going to drop it in. This is fantastic for diagramming. So if I go over here to my toolbar, I can actually change what shape that I want my shape to be. So if you're familiar with like the diagramming, we have squares, we have parallelograms, um, and we also have circles and triangles and diamonds. So actually, I think we have all of those. But so uh, I can change the color, right? I can add some text. If I double click, I can add the text here. So I think Priya is actually up here in my file um, at the same time adding to our user flow diagram. So we have a user flow. Uh, we're thinking about our checkout flow um, for our you know, fake organization uh, Twigma. We want to sell more plants. So we're able to kind of work together on this diagram. Um, really cool things about the diagramming. I can add in my text. I can make my text larger, so I can set it to a heading or a title size. So we have a number of those preset sizes. But the one really cool thing is I can actually just go over here to the right and click that little plus, and it'll automatically create a new text box, and they're automatically joined. So even these little arrow connectors, I can control the thickness. I can control the type. I can make them dotted lines. And once again, it'll continuously keep that connection to my previous element. Uh, so here I can just say, all right, cool. I got another little bit there. Don't mind my, you know, sophisticated typing abilities here. Uh, and I can add another little bit. And I can also change that color. So with the connectors, there's, there's two different ways to do that. The shortcut key for those connectors is going to be Shift C. So when I press Shift C, you'll see it highlighted down here in the jam bar. And I can just drag from any point to any other point. Now, this isn't just limited to those shapes. If we look at our broader diagram here, we also have these elements that have been pasted into Figma. Um, we have these little whiteboarding uh, 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 wireframe diagrams uh, of a mobile design. So what we can actually do with that connector, I'm going to press Shift C and I'm going to connect it. It'll also keep that relationship. Let's say if I want to move it down to the bottom, I can further that, that kind of like relationship. I can move it down to the bottom. And because this is brought in from Figma, it's still editable. And I can say, you know, wireframe 001. You know, that's how I'd be naming my wireframes. And then also I can go in, in between those little areas, you'll see there's a little text add. So I can add in text and say, you know, connects and does the thing. So when it connects and does the thing, I can add in the text color background. I can change the color. So you can fully customize that experience. And once again, the great thing is, is that those connectors constantly keep that relationship. Um, so we just have a couple of other examples here. Shout out to Tom Lowry for these other examples. So these are other types of charts and diagrams that can be made. And once again, they're using the same lines and connectors and except they're being tied to text objects, and especially if you're really like, you know, like noting through those elements. Um, so this is just another example. So this is when we expand into Twigma music and Twigma movies. This is kind of like that little bit of a brainstorm. So uh, lastly, what I want to show in this little section is how to bring over some of those elements from Figma. So over here, I have, uh, where's my team? So like, here's my team. Um, in my team, I have a file that's my mobile checkout flow. I already have that open right here. So I have my mobile checkout flow in Figma and I wanna bring it over to FigJam for team critique. So I can go ahead, can select all of my frames. I'm gonna hit Command C. So I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it right back into FigJam. Um, so one little detail on that, as you bring things over, they're still going to have some degree of editability, right? So I can still hop in here and I can change some of this text. If you don't want that text to be editable in FigJam, right? So like, let's say you want to restrict that. This is a little bit of a deep cut. Um, what I can do is in Figma, I can designate that layer as being locked. So if that layer is locked, when I copy and bring it over into FigJam, I'm going to just paste this down right here. Now I can't edit that anymore. And you'll see that little locked layer above. So that's a little bit of a deep cut for those power users out there. But while we're working in this space, everybody can leave comments. They can leave their stickies. They can 
uh, leave little reviews, they can uh, emote and uh, better kind of address any issues in these flows. Now, as I have all of these elements here, I can move them independently of each other. And once again, I can add in those connectors and kind of pull them together. So you can see that relationship. So you can take all of those individual frames from Figma, bring them over into FigJam, and then use these kind of dot connectors in here. Um, one other thing, I think somebody asked the question, you know, can you bring what you're working on in FigJam over into Figma? You absolutely can. You can paste those right back in. So that interoperability between Figma and FigJam is going to be really, really awesome. Very clutch. Oh, let's go back here. And Anna, are you ready to uh, show us and uh, the retrospective? Yep. Alrighty. So yeah, so your team has gone through first going over what they're going to do in the week. They've done a brainstorm together. Um, they've gone through and mapped out their user journey flow, created wireframes and designs based on that. And then the final part, um, you can actually also do your retro in Big Jam. So actually, um, one of the people that you guys met today, Wayne, he created this awesome retrospective template that you guys can use as well. Um, it's really well organized. It comes with um, some post-it notes that people can already start using, or you can enter in your own. Um, and then something I want to show that's really cool was uh, Miggy actually created this little clipboard component. And what you can do is you can actually bring in components from Figma into FigJam as long as it is part of the same org. Um, and you can also bring in responsive components. So for this clipboard, for example, I can keep adding on you know, different items to this and it'll responsively expand as I continue to add new action items. And how you're gonna be able to do this is, so here we have these components. Um, these are also some really awesome stickers that different artists in the community have created for us. Um, so yeah, you can see the name Noah Jacobus. He created these awesome ones here that you can use during your brainstorms. Um, and what you're gonna do is if you want to, let's say I wanna add some Twigma components here. So I'm gonna click this plus button. It's gonna search through the libraries. You just search for your own and then you just click add to file. And then once you do that, it's pretty much available for use right away. So I'm gonna go back here. Um, let's see, the browsing section. Yep, and I have access to these wireframing components and brainstorm or design critique elements that I can literally just drag into the file. Um, super easy, just pull these in and I can use them right away. And yeah, it's really useful. So if you guys have, have any kinds of like specific components that you wanna be using in your brainstorm, you can use that. Um, or if there's any like cool stickers you wanna use to react. So we have a bunch of cute stickers here saying like, let's jam. Um, and to react to all the different um, sticky note ideas that people have. So in addition to our stamps and emote reactions, we have these stickers you can use as well to express your opinions. Um, it's just like a lot of fun and makes the Fig Jam file look really awesome. So yeah. And yeah, if you have a company, useful. oh, I'm sorry. If, no, you if, can go ahead. If you have a company, you can just make, publish your own library of components and have your own stickies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. You can also search things by um, so different like identifiers. So if I wanted to search for like a heart sticker for an idea that I really love, you just search for heart and it brings up all the ones that are related to that, which is really cool. So I can easily pull that in. Um, also, you can leave this um, panel open by just dragging it and it'll automatically stay to the side. So as I'm working through my file, if I want to easily pull things in, um, it's pretty simple to do that as well. Awesome. And then I guess now going on to Miggy has some really cool tips on additional things to know about Fig Jam. All right. So let's see. Um, cool. All right. So um, all of these little elements here, these like little like push pins, and um, these are all custom made in Figma, brought in. And uh, 
those of you that are really familiar that with Figma, you are our Figma Pro users. Um, this section is for you to really highlight all of the features brought into FigJam that like thoroughly respect the uh, hardcore Figma user. So first thing, I'm going to select all of these little cards. I'm going to go right here and uh, auto layout them. Uh, well, not auto layout them, but you know, like. Um, Align, auto align them. I think that's the proper term. So here I can kind of like expand them, bring them out. And uh, let's start to talk about all of these like kind of rapid fire features that are available in FigJam. So first off, the keyboard shortcut pane. Uh, if you go over to the help and resources, keyboard shortcuts. So those of you that like to learn Figma using the keyboard shortcut pane, you could easily kind of go through. Uh, each one of these here. Um, and then as you highlight each one of those keyboard shortcuts, uh, they will uh, highlight. Um, so that's keyboard shortcuts pane. Next up, zooming. So zoom to fit. I can select these two elements and press shift two, and it'll zoom to fit anything that I have selected. So if I have this little questions over here and I select that, I can zoom into it. Um, and then if I press shift one, it'll actually zoom out and see everything as a whole. So these keyboard shortcuts are really, really helpful, especially if you're going to be the ones running the meeting, you know, you're holding the agenda. Uh, next up, we have arranging layers. So here I'm actually going to ungroup this element and we have a number of different layers here. So I can bring it forward, send it backwards. So I can say send it back, right? It's back there. I can also use the shortcut key command. Um, what is it, forward bracket, to kind of bring that up, or I can bring it all the way to the front. So if you're familiar with that in your design applications with Figma, you know, it's going to be uh, the same here. Uh, all of these text fields that are brought in here are actually like auto layout uh, text fields. So uh, if you want to bring in like a custom font, all you have to do is copy paste the text field from Figma. Uh, next up, grouping. Uh, so right now, all of these objects are grouped. Whenever you select an element, you'll see this little window pop up at the top. It gives you the opportunity to ungroup, to regroup, to ungroup. Uh, so even over here, I can choose to like align those to the left. I can align those to the right. I can align those uh, up top or I can kind of like redistribute that. So all of that kind of like arrangement and grouping of elements is gonna be really powerful for you to engage in in FigJam. Um, next up, saving local files in the same way that you can save a .fig file, even though, you know, uh, if there's some reason that you absolutely wanna keep that, that file local, you can go here, file, save local copy. And that is uh, gonna give you a .jam file uh, to work with that. Uh, next up, um, some of you have been seeing that we have thumbnails on our FigJam files. Um, though it isn't currently, you know, FigJam is still in beta, so some things are still being worked out. Uh, it's not a native function, but if you bring over a frame from Figma, that frame will give you the opportunity to set it as a thumbnail, right? So you create a thumbnail in Figma, you copy, you paste it into FigJam, you can set it as a thumbnail, you're gonna be good as golden. Um, so especially if you're saving a file that's gonna go out to the community and you want a nice thumbnail to kind of follow it, that's what you can do. Uh, next up, version history. Uh, version history is gonna be very similar to Figma. I right click, I can go file, show version history. So you can even save iterations of your file to the version history. This is going to be really important because like, let's say you have a presentation, everybody throws a bunch of stickies on it and you're like, oh man, I didn't have like another version of that. You can easily kind of unwind and go back or rewind and go back to a point in some where you didn't have those stickies at all. So here I can actually look at my autosave versions and we could see that, you know, yes, in fact, we all had been working on this file as far back as May 4th. Um, so that's going to be there. Version history is going to be fantastic. It's going to function the exact same way that it does for um, uh, uh, it, the way that it does for for Figma. Okay, and I just press Escape to kind of close that out. Uh, next up, where are we at? Quick menu. So the quick menu function is going to be just like in Figma. Um, right now, the uh, keyboard shortcut for it is still being sussed out. Like I mentioned, you know, we're in beta. So um, Command P will bring it up. I know that that's the international version of the keyboard. If you want to know and you're looking for it, it's going to be over here in the top left. And then you go File and I'm um, sorry, go to Quick Actions and anything that you type 
um, you'll basically be finding the existing functions within FigJam. So I can start to type in, you know, uh, let's say, you know, lock layers, right? So if I have an object selected and I want to lock it, you know, um, I can pull up the quick command menu and I can say lock unlock selection. So now it's locked and uh, I can do that again and say unlock and now it's unlocked. So that's going to be great. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Anna, you did the making a library available in FigJam, right? Uh, yep, cool. that was already covered. <laughs> so we're, we're pretty much covered with that. Um, the, the making the library available. So like if you want to make your own stickers, uh, all of the stickers that we have here, they're just made in Figma using auto layout and kind of brought in. Uh, so these are uh, some stickers that you can find in the default library. Um, as I look through what I want to make sure I, I'm, I'm giving the proper attribution. So these are foodies by Skinny Ships. And we also have a really, really cool D&D &D one uh, that's made available by, where's the artist name? I always lose this one. There it is. Uh, this is the Monster Manual by Alana Louise. So what's really cool about these, um, we made these fully editable, right? So I can go in and I can type and then I can expand and I can keep that going. And I can keep that scroll going as long as I need to. So I'm just kind of filling up that space there. Right. So what's really cool about these is let's say, you know, you're using them and you want to make your own. You're just like, yo, Miggy, I see that you got these really cool stickers as defaults, but I want to make my own. Just copy, paste them, put them right back into Figma. So I can go over here to my, uh, oh, where'd my Figma file go? Nope. Don't want to do that just yet. Let me create a new Figma file because I don't have one open. Let's say here, uh, let's go to my drafts create a new design file and uh, I hit paste. So this is now pasted in. You'll actually see it show up as an instance. So I can detach that instance and uh, we can actually see how this is created using auto layout. So um, if you want to play around with that, that's something that's going to be really cool. Uh, if you have that, like, you know, person who's like really, really big in a uh, to, to Figma and they want to produce some really cool stickers for your team, uh, kind of show them that. All right, Q and A, Tom. Is there anything that we need to cover, uh, Anna or Priya? Did we go too fast? Um, yeah, someone asked a great question about how we inserted the mobile wireframe. Um, so one of the things that we did a little bit earlier was, you know, bringing in our own. Um, design system components. And so that's one way if your team really wants to, you know, put wireframes in FigJam and work on it together that way, you can actually create your own wireframing components and pull that into FigJam yourselves, um, which is super useful. Yeah, so you, you showed them right here. We had that mm -hmm. library that's already part of our team. So if we go to need to get my, I need to get my tabs in order is what I need to do. So this is our team and uh, Anna. Yeah. So like, this is the, uh, the checkout flow and these are the twig jam components that we had made available. So here are the twig jam components. They're published as a library. And Anna, you had a really cool tip that you posted on, um, on Twitter the other day, right? That talked about <laughs> yeah. organizing these. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I know a lot of times um, components can get really complicated in terms of naming, especially if you have a lot of different components in the same file. So actually one way that you can better organize them is if you create um, separate frames within your FigJam um, file, as well as separate pages, um, that hierarchy is going to apply in the left side assets panel as well. So you so, can yeah. see we have different frames with the titles those are going to be the names of the different drop downs. So right here we have Twig Jam Chrome Ponents, and then over here in the Assets panel, Twig Jam Chrome Ponents. So that's how they're going to show up. And we also have the uh, the phone. So what this does is this is currently published and up to date. So if we were to make any changes, um, let's say I make a change to I'm going to change a selection color. Just make that selection color change. Is that an instance or is that a, oh, that's just an instance. Is this, this is the actual component. Let me change it on the main component. So I'm gonna change that color so I can hit publish. I'm gonna publish this. And now when we come back over, we'll see that we have a component update. We hit update. And now that it's update, we can see that color change.
Cool. Any other questions? Any other questions? Let's see. Uh, use the checkbox. Oh, yeah. Um, can you show how to add libraries on an organization level on design? So um, I don't believe, is there is there anything different with adding the library on an organizational level versus like a team level, Anna, that you know of? I don't think so. I think as long as the FigGem file that you created is within that specific team or organization, you should have access into importing any and all design system files that are available to that team or org. Yep. So yeah, so like you can add those libraries just like that. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, so variants. We didn't really talk too much about variants. Um, so one thing here, we have a really cool sticker set, Give Me a Hand by Olenka. Um, and what this is, is each one of these is a, a component set, like a variant object. So we can actually set and change the individual ones that we have here. Um, so if you were to go to the agenda kit, you can select the agenda and here, each one of these are a different variant in that component set. So I can change it to blue, I can change it to brown. Um, and then another one that we had that's pretty cool is a list item. So you can add a list item. This is like a to-do and you can use the variant to create a, it as being checked off. So if you have buttons in your design system that you know you want to test out maybe within some like wireframe template, you can use those variants to uh, begin to swap those out. Cool. Are there any other questions maybe for like the Eng team for Priya? Uh, Maggie, someone asked what your favorite thing is about Fig Jam. What's my favorite thing about Fig Jam? Um, I think that my favorite thing about my absolute favorite thing about Fig Jam is making stickers, um, like auto layout stickers. Um, mm -hmm. It was it was a blast to just kind of like make some of these. Um, Raji got to work with Skinny Ships in making these auto layout ones, uh, and then I got to have a hand at started starting to figure out how some of these were created. So I think that that's one of the biggest opportunities. I'm really excited for the community to see what people create sticker wise and what they publish out to the community as well. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. so. So oh, we also um, got a question about this earlier, but um, yeah, if you guys notice little headphones icon um, by our like profile faces in the top right corner, that's actually for enabling audio. Um, it's available both to FigJam and Figma. Um, and basically it just lets you be able to talk to uh, your teammates as you're collaborating in a file without having to send like a separate invite to a meeting. Um, so. I think the main reason behind this is we really wanted to enable people to do a lot of like spontaneous collaboration. So maybe someone comes into a file and then you can just like chat as you're working. Yeah, so audio I think is still, you know, it's still coming. It's still a, a feature that is gonna be like turned on in beta for some teams. So it's not fully rolled out yet. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So. Um, actually, there's one other thing that I wanted to show. I didn't have the opportunity to show uh, with the variants. Um, so here we were doing the critique, right? So this was like a product image critique. Uh, this is also just a variant object. So we can say like in progress, complete. You know, so, you know, really want to lean in on, you know, there's a really cool opportunity to kind of make custom components for your team.